Good afternoon everyone and welcome to another Mech Merlin build stream. As you can see from the stream title down below, we are working on the Trio 65, the Percent Studios Trio 65 that I just unboxed this past Wednesday. Um, looks like a good board, looks like it's gonna sound good and feel good, but you don't really know until you build it. So that's what we're gonna do today. See a Not Panos and an Alfred Stid coming to join in. Thanks guys for joining in at the start of the stream. So yeah, people on Wednesday were asking me what switches was I gonna use for this? And I was very adamant on using red colored switches cause I was like, no, it's a red colored board. I want red switches on it. And you know, I don't really have that many red switches. All I had were those um, Cardinals from Mechwild that were a little too heavy for me. And then the other red switches that I had were just Gateron Phantom Reds, which were in my Keychron V1. And while I like those, I just get the feeling that a deeper sounding switch might not be the way to go for this board. So I'm gonna use another switch that I recently unboxed. The big wig switches from Keybfront. Here, let me show you guys a link to the to these guys. This one is probably one of the more interesting switches that I've unboxed on stream, simply because it's it's using a PBT bottom housing. So just quick specs on this guy. This is a top housing of HDPE. It is a linear switch. Bottom housing is PBT. Long pole, palm stem, 13.7 millimeters, five pins, and two stage 65, 667G, I mean. Look at these guys. So they are partially red, just maroonish on the bottom. Not that you'll see that. But yeah, these are what I'll be using today. As usual, I like to pre-populate my board. So I already have the PE foam on it. I figured I'd build it with all the foams first just to see how it goes. Um, unfortunately, it is a soldered board. So once I put the foams in, you know, like if I want to do any kind of testing, it's going to be a lot harder go this is the polycarb plate is a gray colored polycarb though usually i see it completely transparent so this is this is pretty interesting and i guess for those of you who didn't get a chance to see the board let me show it off really quick before we do the stream i keep forgetting my um top down camera isn't too color accurate when it comes to red so we're actually gonna do the here let's do it the front facing there we go, that's a lot more accurate looking. Very beautiful board. So yeah, there's an option to put in plate foam as well, which I will put in simply because when it comes to uh, gasket mounted boards like this guy, I tend to prefer stiffer plates so I'm hoping that by putting this guy in, it's going to stiffen up the plate a little more. And of course, here is the case foam. So the number one challenge when you have a PE foam board, is you wanna make sure that everything is aligned properly. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna put the, the um, anchor switches in first, just so it folds everything in place. Does anyone in chat have percent studio boards? Curious to hear people's thoughts. I, for one, only have one other percent studio board. This is my second one, actually. No, actually, this is my third. I um, sold the very first one that I got, actually. I can hear you library too. How is it going with the cold you have had? It's It wasn't necessarily a cold, it was the after effects of COVID. But I have been healed for the last month or two. I take it that you haven't joined in for a month. <laughs> if you're just noticing this now. All right. It looks like that's all good. All right, I'm just gonna solder in all of these points first, and then we'll put the rest of the switches in. 
building your half plate for the Vega right now. Awesome. Yeah, the Vega, definitely one of my favorite 65s. I did buy it to be like my end game 65 per se, and it did not disappoint. I've been super happy with it. Sometimes I think it, it's, it, it's going to take a lot to beat it. Right, where's the other one? There we go. Would be a lot of soldering for the Vega? I wouldn't say it's any more than than a regular 65 worth of soldering. Not a lot, but half plates take a while. Yeah, I can see that. For the Alphas to not be crooked, yeah. Normally whenever I do like a half plate build or a, or a plateless build, I try to put the keycaps on first and look at it that way. All right, I think I've got mostly, oh, I'm actually gonna do the, do the space bar as well. That's another good anchor point. Okay, I think I'm done. Everything's soldered, let's just take a gander. Make sure all the joints look good. Nothing looks like a cold joint. Oh, found one, right over there in the corner. Nope, everything looks good. We can can clean up the board now. Let's see, just got it. Can this be built plateless? It would. Imp it seems like you could because this is where the gaskets go. I would assume so, but I don't know for sure. I also typically don't like plateless boards. Preference of mine has has changed several times, especially because. One of my favorite 75s is the 7V, which I built plateless, along with the Thera 75, which I also built plateless, you know? <laughs> what am I doing with the toothbrush? Um, so whenever you solder, you'll see that there's excess flux that builds up around each of the switch legs. So over time, this excess flux can lead to corrosion. So what you want to do is you want to use some isopropyl alcohol and Q-tips, tissue, whatever, works just as well. But I find that toothbrush works the best. All right, so while I did explain that you can use isopropyl alcohol to clean your PCB, please do not ever use it to clean your keyboard. <laughs> you will ruin the anodization and if you have any brass or any PVD plating, that's going to ruin it even more. So do not use alcohol to clean any of this. Hello Madeline says, are you using 99% isopropyl alcohol? I only have 70% at home and they seem not working. I have used anywhere from 70 to 99 and they have all worked fine for me. 
if they're not working for you to clean off the flux, you're probably not like I, I would recommend using a toothbrush or also, you know, do it in a circular fashion rather than a back and forth. All right, there it is. And boom. Earlier or during the build stream or during the unboxing stream, I mentioned I was going to do the upgraded version of the daughter board, but I unfortunately have not found any spares. So I think I may just have to buy a bunch more. Reason why I say upgraded is this one seems to adhere to the C1 standard, which only has the ESD protection. It doesn't have over current or over voltage, which, you know, it's not necessarily a bad thing because ESD, the ESD protection, I would argue, is the more pressing need simply because boards tend to die to ESD more than they do to over voltage and over current. So yeah, as long as it's got that, it's fine. But you know, if if something better is available, I of course want to go for that. Where do you buy upgraded daughter boards? Um, Canon Keys sells them. Maker Keyboard sells them. I think Novel Keys sells them as well. Even Divinity Key sells them. Okay, so one thing I have not received, but the Prio 65 is build instructions. So I don't actually know where to put these gaskets. They look small so I've been told that they go on the bottom but I don't know what that means and I know these go on the PCB so I guess we can put this on a PCB first you know I know this board was on Z Frontier so maybe the Z Frontier has links to the build Z Frontier Trio 65 Yep, that page doesn't tell me where to put the gaskets. Well, uh, maybe we'll figure it out. Let's figure it out. Let's at least put on the ones that we know need to go on. This gasket sock, similar to what Owl Labs has been doing. Love it so much. I wonder if these gaskets are, are optional. Not sure. Like someone on my Discord mentioned that they were supposed to be there for um for like the bottom, but I'm not seeing anywhere on the bottom where it would obviously go. So we'll see. Where would it make sense to have the additional gaskets? Doesn't make sense for it to go on the side because that's not contacting the plate at all. Oh, oh, I think I know where. I think, I think it has to go in between, like in there. That's where I think it needs to go. Okay, let's put on the rest of the keycaps here. Yeah, I like that. I like that a lot. Okay. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's put on all the keycaps first and then make a make a determination. Yeah, I've personally not been a fan of DCS sounds. 
Yeah, I, I've I, I've always found found them to sound too thin. I do notice these big wigs, their stems are a little bit tight sounding. Is it just me, or does it sound like a better jelly epic? <laughs> to some, it might. I like having an FN key over there. I want the control key. Control key over there. I'm glad I chose this key set for it. It looks, it, it makes it look like a classic board. Okay, let's plug it in. Let's see if those lights all light up. Yep, there it is. Look at that. Red, red on a red board doesn't look nice, but oh well. Oh, it sounds so good. And we can do a quick typing test and I can give a few opinions. Okay, there we go. Let's see, I really like the sound, but I'm noticing that basically, basically this bottom row here sounds extremely hollow for some reason. Not sure if you guys can hear it. Yeah, you can hear it on the on this key. Oh, actually you can hear it on the top as well. But then over here, where people usually type, that's fine, that sounds immaculate. There we go. All right. Uh, final thoughts on the board. Um, I had a very strong feeling that I would like the board. Um, I still do. I still like the board. I love how it looks. I like its overall aesthetics. Um, even the red is super striking and I'm not a big fan of the color red. Um, love how it types. This is, this is a good feel for me. By the way, I used big wig switches right here. This is a, I know it's a PBT, bottom housing, HDPE top housing, and a palm long pole stem, two stage 67G spring. So yeah, really, really liking how it sounds there. Um, we'll have to say though that this bottom row is, I don't know, I felt like I had to put in too much effort, too much e effort in order to, to get rid of the hollowness. I did um, paper towel mod because I didn't have any ex extra foam on me. Um, then I had to do the force bake mod and while it did remove quite a lot of that hollowness that I was hearing It's still not enough. It's still not enough and to me that's that's ver that, that's very disappointing
the thing with the gaskets though is I've only got four extra gaskets, so hopefully I can recover some of the ones that I've I've already used. But yeah, fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. We'll see what happens. This is the whole purpose of this hobby, you know, you um figure out what you like by trying out different mods, different ways of doing things. And who knows, maybe one of those many ways that you've tried doing it is the answer. But we'll see. We'll see. Uh, Fit Labs asked, do you like the poppy sound? Yes. The poppy sound will not disappear. Okay. Here, you guys can already see that got the gaskets on there. So the gaskets I'm talking about are not these gasket socks that are on here. The gaskets that I'm talking about are the... Here. Are these, these little ones that I put on the side. Apparently that was the wrong place to put them. So I'm not sure if you can see them, but I put them on the sides like this simply because, you know, I thought that's where they would go. So, but I was very blatantly wrong. So I now have to peel them off and hopefully they're still sticky enough to put where they need to be. See, I'm not including any of the quote-unquote foam, extra foam that I put in. <laughs> also known as paper towels. <laughs> Did it have the hollowness on the top row? No hollowness on the top row. Okay, perfect. Yeah, let's try the bottom row. Yeah, that def definitely improved it. Okay. I can still hear some hollowness on the bottom row there. But it's nowhere near as bad as when I had the gaskets on in, in the wrong way. But yeah, this is... This is much better. Much better. In terms of feel... Let's see... That actually does feel softer, so that's good. That's really good. I like that. It's no surprise that if you build the board, if you put the gaskets in the correct places, of course the board will sound better. So basically everything I was experimenting with during the build stream on Saturday were all false assumptions. Because right now, built properly, of course with all the foam in, now you have, there's no hollowness coming up any here. There, there's no hollowness showing up up here anymore. There's still some down here. Um, I did mention though that with the case foam in place, it did seem to tighten up the board. So what I'm going to do next is to remove the case foam and see and see where we're at. All right, let's see how this sounds without the case foam. 
Oh, I like that sound better. But is there hollowness? Nope, no hollowness on the top. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. Because the board is o is louder, it kind of drowns out some of the hollowness on the bottom row. Okay. Like the sides still have hollows hollowness on it, but that should be fine. Oh, it's even flexier now too. That's good. I like that a lot. All right, let's turn off the music really quick. And let's do a typing test. Okay, now that I'm typing on it, I can hear the hollowness underneath the space bar. So I'm like, ah, oh, okay. Maybe I should keep the case foam in. I'm gonna put the case foam back in. I know it's like, put, put it in, take it out, put it in, take it out. But you know, it's a good thing the board isn't too difficult to um, take apart. And I'm gonna do what I did previously. I'm gonna put the foam, this little blocks of paper towels, just where it's echoing the most, <laughs> which is on the sides here. And I'm actually gonna put one where the space bar is. Typing test, take two. I got rid of it, guys. Oh, it's still there on the corners, but at least it's gone on the space bar now, okay. Okay, okay, all right. I am now much happier with this board than when I started this stream. But yeah, thanks guys for joining in. Um, you will most likely see this on future streams for the next week at least. Speaking of future streams, tomorrow is my weekly group by news. If you wanna know what's but starting up and ending for the following week, definitely tune in 7.30 p.m. PDT, Seattle time and all that. But yeah, thanks guys for watching, and I will see you when I see you. Goodbye, everyone.